Hey everybody, Adam from The Army Painter here. If you remember when we launched the new Game Master Terrain Kits, we had a little challenge at HQ between our two founders, Bo and Jonas. Bo was to create a full table worth of terrain for competitive wargaming, while Jonas, on the other hand, was to build a full table of terrain with a more narrative theme. Each of them received a Game Master Terrain Kit. Bo received an additional $10 to buy extra supplies, where Jonas, because he was building a narrative terrain table, he received $20. The goal for each of our contestants was to build an entire table worth of wargaming terrain in 48 hours. Jonas had the narrative table and he had some really cool ideas that we wanted to showcase and dive a little bit deeper to see exactly how he was able to build this craft world themed tabletop. Let's take a look. Right, one uh, whole table's worth of Crusader do-it-yourself scenery. I've got the foam. I've got my my uh, appointed scenery kit with the desert theme. Includes the obviously the desert spray, which sets the tone. It includes the highlight colours I'm going to dry brush with. It includes the wash to add the, the sort of the shading. And for the special effects, I've got dry rust and I've got the big pot of uh, desert base that I'm going to use on my my sand and it's got some bigger rocks I bought the, the sand so I'm, I'm completing that it's also got razor wire and it's got the dark scorched tuft apart from that I bought the swamp tuft I bought the three colors that I'll need for my elder gemstones and I've got my brushes, my knife, my steel ruler that I'm not sure I'm actually going to use at all because it's going to be all sort of organic round shapes. Uh, I am going to use this one though for exactly that. Hot wire, frame cutter, I can, I can do bended shapes and, and stuff like that. Um, got my glue and I've got packed program I need to I need to get working now so first thing first when you're working with the XPS foam from the factory it comes with it's sort of cut by a big machine and it creates sort of a, a, a smooth gloss surface on each side and what you need to do here is take your sandpaper and you need to, to, to sand the surface that you that you need. Um, fairly straightforward, it, it's actually quite an easy process. So just right. I've sanded my the first of the booster packs, all sanded on, on both sides. And now actually I'm ready to, to um, start cutting. Um, I've made a few sketches uh, and now I'm going to draw a uh, design onto my, my XPS foam. And the trick here is actually not to use a pen. If you use a pen, then you make a line uh, in the foam and it will stay there forever. So I've got a filter pen, which is soft and doesn't make uh, any any uh, lasting uh, impact it's elder theme so i'm gonna sort of try smooth shapes so that will be my my base plate and then i'm actually see if i can use the same shape here That will be my my ruin. Again, I'm I'm going to try and see if I can I can save as much of the foam as possible, reuse some of my my lines. So this is a bit of an experiment, really. And really, it's just about being confident. And go for it. So I've cut them out. I 
I'll use that for later. This is a this is my design idea. And what I want to do now is is add some sort of um, sort of half circle holes uh, in here. And I'm not sure. I've got a few different sort of sizes here that I'm going to try out. This is my test piece. I'm just going to sketch them here so I can cut them out with, maybe that was a bit too big. Hmm. I'll just try some different ones. That's better. Again, I use the filled pen, so uh, in case I'm not exactly following the same line, it doesn't matter. It won't, it won't show up once it's painted. The hot wire foam cutter. And now it's, my, my aim is to, to follow this inner shape uh, as gently as I can. So I press it down, it warms up. It gives this sort of organic shape. The next bit, before I start to sort of ruin it a bit, it's time for the fun stuff uh, of building scenery, is to take your carefully selected, hand-picked beating rock um, and the best way to do this is really to imagine maybe that this this piece of scenery could be bow for instance I'm just making this up as I go but uh, <laughs> so and there's no sort of right or wrong here sometimes less is more but in this case more is more this adds texture that really is picked out on the on the dry brush stage later on. Start to sort of make it look a bit like it's it's battle worn, it's ruined in some some way. Um, and I'm just gonna make some random sort of chips and and and, and cuts. Not too many. I, I want the, 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 the whole field to be sort of fairly sort of intact if you like. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make it battle damaged. Uh, in, in various places. And here I'm just using my craft knife sort of at, at random. And once, once I've done that you can sort of weather that bend by really using your rock. It's a bit like that. I'll work on it some more, but then the plan is that this will with this will act as a base. I will put this on here, add some rubble down there, uh, and really, that's it. So I'm in the process of adding a bit of elder feel to my uh, my ruins here. Still trying to stick only to these organic. Uh, sort of curved uh, shapes that uh, I've done, but been on the internet, googled uh, Elder Runes, and uh, got these for inspiration. Just to illustrate what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick it on my my um, my XPS foam, and now using a pencil, I'm very carefully, it's going to draw around the edges and by drawing I make a line in the XPS foam 
Then later, now what it's going to do is just make it deeper. So it will pop when I finally dry brush it all painted. So the triangle is my sort of base shape. Uh, it, it, it's the sort of theme for, for most of them. Um, I will make a little variation here. Just freehand. Now again, so that was my drawing. Bit, a bit more pressure, a bit deeper. And as you notice, I've done this before. I've um, added texture and beaten the the whole sheet with uh, my rock. So I I have an option of not uh, making making this room less weathered. Like that. If you if you haven't checked out, there is a ton of tutorial videos. These are some of the same tips that you use for for making a dungeon crawl scenery. Another little template I did was for my gemstones. Um, I made two different sizes, but it's basically the same the same piece of cardboard cut out with a pair of scissors. And this one. Is exactly the same thing. I'm just gonna trace the, the template with my pencil. Boom, there we go. Just go over it, adding a bit more pressure. Cool, very simple. Some of the shapes I want is, is sort of holes uh, in in the room. This is the one I did earlier. But here I've got my uh, my room shape, um, and for that I need my uh, uh, hot wire cutter. Beginning, I found that it was a bit tricky to get really clean shapes. I was shaking a bit too much. I'm getting old, and um, so here's here's a little trick. Uh, I've got a few. Uh, this is a lid. Uh, this is another round shape. Here's a coin. It could be all sorts. Just to illustrate, uh, I'll hold it like that. So, and I have my my hot wire cutter. I warm it up. And now I just oh, trace it around while it's cutting. Careful not to cut your fingers, and it's much more even. I made a little mistake here, but much more even. Let's see if I can do it a bit better this time. It's a bit tricky filming at the same time, but and I'll use it a uh, final time with an even smaller. You've got to be careful that you don't cut your fingers because uh, the wire does get really hot. Boom! Much better than my shaky, uh, shaky hands. I've uh, spent a few hours cutting some some ruins out, but now I actually really want to see just something that resembles a ruin finished. So uh, I get my scenery PVA glue, the base, the top and the support. It's a good idea to make supports. It, it strengthens your scenery. If I only glued this bit in, it would snap really easy. But this, even the tiny uh, piece like this will, um, will add a lot of sort of strength to it. Uh, later on, I'm also gonna 
be adding some uh, some rubble and some some uh, sand that will also help strengthening my my construction so this is of course it's a super simple one I'm just did this I mean, this is as simple as it gets. This is actually the same thing. I've, I've made a fairly tall structure and then a, a tinier support thing. Like, it almost looks like a sailing ship in a way. Um, it goes exactly the same way. PVA glue at the bottom. And PVA glue on the side and the bottom of the support piece. The PVA, t you, you need to leave this stuff overnight really to get, to make sure it's proper, properly dry. And again, later on, I'll be adding a bit of sand and gravel and, and some, some rubble. Uh, super simple. I'm going to do another assembly. See here, I've done my my uh, gemstone in the middle. I've done a rune on the other side. Done my weathering. It's all ready. PVA. 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 Boom, boom. Main piece and support piece. chopped, I've rocked, I am, uh, I've, I've glued the, uh, the base structure together and now I'm going to add some uh, some rubble. I've, I've chopped up some small pieces of XPS foam. I've got my uh, my cork rocks that came with the uh, desert set and I've got my brown battlegrounds that I bought for my 20 um, dipping dollars. And now we need to add a bit of texture onto uh, onto what is in effect the base. So I'm just taking my PVA glue and applying directly onto this, it's focusing basically all around the the structure that I've glued on, and then a few other bits. I've got my one of my brushes, a little bit of water, just. To splash up the glue. The next bit is then to add some of these. There's no right or wrong. I'm just going to add some until I John, I'm happy with that. Next is uh, the cork rocks sprinkled on, not too much, just a few pieces. Again, I'm trying to sort of center it as near as I can to the um, to the brick rubbles. There we go. The last bit is the brown battleground. Now I just need to cover the whole base. And this will, of course, stick in the wet PVA glue. And there we go. The cork and the, uh, the XPS foam uh, bricks sticking and the excess sand and uh, pulled off and then with this piece of paper, I just fold it. I'm ready for the next one. Just about to go out and spray all the scenery, but the, the first thing you need to do is to remove the loose sand. So the PVA is dry now, and um, there's all this excess sand. The important thing is to get rid of it all. 
because once you spray it and then when you start to dry brush it if it's not really um, stuck to it you, you'll you'll dry brush it into your paint and your uh, brush and it will leave white spots so I've got this old crappy uh, brush here and I'm just gonna work work the sand to make sure that anything that is not really glued to it uh, is removed doesn't take long next bit but this is actually an important uh, step and um, yeah I'm just gonna do the whole thing and then I'm I'm ready to uh, to work my spray magic right building is done sand is done <laughs> and my work place just looked like a mess so I'm just cleaning up a little bit so when I come in tomorrow morning um, it's a it's a fresh start uh, tomorrow is all about spraying and painting and finishing off with tufts so uh, I made a mess of it I just need to <laughs> I just need to make everything ready again so here, here's my result for the first day um, including filming um, spent about 10 hours on the project so far and um, it's a fair bit actually this is a whole table's worth of Elder Craft World scenery uh, the sand has just been put on I've made quite a few of these ruins and uh, there's some gem engravings uh, tomorrow is going to be really interesting because I'll see if my my vision inside of my head can be uh, portrayed onto the scenery. I've got this bone colored uh, craft world scenery with the blue runes and stuff. Let's see how, how that plays out. Right now, after 10 hours, I'm done. I look forward to a bit of sleep. See you tomorrow. And day one is finished. And you can see that Jonas was able to build an entire craft world worth of terrain in just under 24 hours. He just needs to let all of the glue set up so he can begin priming and painting the terrain tomorrow. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. What did you like about some of the tricks that Jonas did? What would you have done a little bit differently? I really loved how he used the round pieces as stencils when he was cutting out the shapes on the pieces of terrain. Let's get right to day two. Right, we are at the warehouse now, ready for spray. Uh, we would have done it outside normally, but it is a little bit of snow, quite a lot of rain, and uh, just nasty ass weather. So we decided <laughs> to do it inside instead. Jonas, you lined yours up uh, for spray now. Yeah. Would you like to start or should I? Go I'll, I'll start. All right. So with all sprays, give them a good shake. Uh, just mix in the... Um, is that a good shake? That's a good shake. All right. Now the trick here, it, whenever I spray stuff like this, is to go for the hard parts to reach first. So uh, that's the underneath of, uh, of this one and my, my big piece. And why do you do that? Why do you, why do you go from... I just, I just find it easier uh, to, to sort of cover those bits uh, first and then I can sort of twist it around afterwards. And, right. I've also got another piece here, just got an underneath. And then I've got my my biggest piece. See the thing with these sprays is they're alcohol based, they're not solvent based, which means that so probably, well, it's at least the only spray that I know of that can spray directly on XPS foam. If you use the color primer from our normal range, uh, you would you would simply melt the whole thing. So don't do that. It's got to be the special uh, Game Master Series sprays.
Right. I think that was all the spots. So once once you're done, it's really important to clean the nozzle, uh, and you do that by turning it upside down. Spray until you can see that it's only air coming out. See now. And now the nozzle is clean. Ready. So I'm going to leave them to dry now for 20 minutes at least. Come back, see if I've missed some spots and, uh, and touch-ups, or otherwise I'm probably going to be ready to, to start paint. Spray is uh, dry. Took about 20 minutes, half an hour. I have to admit that when I get them here into better light, I can see that I've missed a few spots. So a few of them, I will need to just uh, just go over again. But what uh, I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to uh, I've got a plan in my head, but I'm, I'm I'm plan to test it on this model from start to go all the way through to just check if I'm happy with it. First thing though is I'm going to take the desert base and paint over all the gravel, all the um, all the sand that I've done on all the bases. I'm going to do that because I know that's going to happen. Once that's dry, I will then dry brush this piece all the way up at the gemstone, at the rune. Just check if I'm happy with that. And if I am, I can go to work on the rest of the scenery. But I'd much rather find out the mistakes or if, if I'm doing anything wrong on one piece first. So, um, and my plan is desert base for the stone, and then dry brush all over with the, the troll claws. That's the, the first highlight. Second highlight is corpse pale. Um, all the chips and stuff, I'll be painting dry rust. And then finally, I will add a very fine, fine highlight with the matte white, which is one of the colors that I bought. For the runes and stuff, the dark sky blue will be my base and I will dry brush on top of that. And the gemstone, which is on over here, I will paint, yeah, I'll show you that later, but that will be blue as well. Uh, and finally, I will add the gloss varnish for the gemstone to make them sort of pop. As you can see, it's, it's the monster size 50 mil because I'm gonna be using a lot of that. The trick here, because it's, um, it's sand, it's a good idea to thin it down quite a bit to make it flow much better. Almost, but not quite like a wash. This will be dry brushed along with the rest of the ruin, but it will, it will look that good that it's got slightly darker base. So I'm trying to avoid getting brown onto, onto what is old, old um, blocks of ruin. Now this will be super boring for you to watch that I'm doing this on 12 pieces of scenery. So uh, I'll be back. So, give me the base color on all the gravel, on all of them. So my plan now is to put those aside and, uh, and finish uh, my, my test piece from start to, to finish, just to see if I like it. So, uh, base coat out of the way. First highlight uh, is troll claws. As always, give your open a good shake. And I'm going to be using the um, the Game Master large dry brush for this. I like having my um, my dry brushing paint on a piece of uh, corrugated uh, cardboard because it actually sucks up the moisture, so it makes it a bit more dry in the in the process. Um, and here I'm going to dry brush the whole thing, including the um, the, the gravel. Uh, I like to go on on a downwards angle mostly. And the first dry brush here, 
you, we, I'm actually going to apply a fairly thick layer. Remember, there's going to be two more dry brush layers on top. So if you are too stingy with the first uh, layer, you end up just dry brushing um, the next layers on top of your first layer and you'll end up with something that is the spray and then the final highlight. So my first layer here, quite a heavy dry brush, if you like. Already here we can see, I don't know, I don't know if it picked up on the camera, but it uh, the rune starts to pick up as well already. Done with the first layer. Uh, next bit is the dry rust. I'm actually gonna uh, pretend that the whole structure is wraith bone and wherever it's cracked or, or damaged, it's, uh, it will show what is sort of underneath, what it's made of, if you like. And this I will use um, dry rust, I'm just adding tiny bit of the uh, desert base just to make it a little bit less orangey so here we've got an orangey brown and this I'm going to paint into the cracks and I'm doing it at this stage because I want um, I want it to be dry brushed along with the next stage but imagine wherever uh, it's like it's it's made of this orangey alien sort of structure underneath, and it's been plastered with uh, with sort of a, a bony bony yellow color. So when whenever it's damaged. Orangey brown bit is done. Time for the next highlight. And here I've got the corpse pail, which is again a lighter version of the, the spray. And then the first was troll claw, now an even lighter one. Same thing, I'm still using the, the large dry brush. Um, and here now I'm just gonna be a lighter strokes. And now here it really turns from a yellowy one to a um, more more bone colors, which is what I'm hoping for. And I'm dry brushing on top of the orangey bit as well to blend the two together. So and I'm focusing on the edges. I mean, also down here on the, on the stones. It's fairly easy. I mean, it's it's the same as what I did before, just less color on on the brush and less color on on the scenery. The next bit now is the blue room, and for this I've got my extra purchase, the dark sky. Give a good shake as always. And here I've got 
the room. The trick here is really to just paint the room. It's almost like miniature painting. Don't paint on to the rest of the scenery. I'll have to start all over again. I've thinned it down just a tiny bit and it doesn't matter if it's not covering 100%. It almost looks like some of the paint has been sort of worn off or peeled off. And that's exactly the, the um, effect I'm hoping for. But look from a distance, it really brings that piece of scenery to life. The next bit here on the other side is a jewel. And the jewel is, or oh, the gemstone, I think it's called. Um, it's going to be all blue here. I want a proper coverage of the blue. So a thicker layer. There's lots of tutorials online how to paint Eldar gemstones. And uh, the only thing here is that this is slightly larger scale, but it's the same technique. You paint it one color. When this is dry, I'm gonna highlight the bottom and at the end, I'm gonna do a dot of white at the top. It creates that sort of illusion of, a, of light shining through the gemstone. And then once the whole scenery piece is done, I'm gonna give it a coat of the gloss varnish to make it sort of stand out. The stone is blue. Next bit, I've taken blue and my matte white, both of the colors that I spent with my dipped colors. Now I'm gonna, I have to do it my way. Sorry, guys, I'm gonna highlight the bottom. Just adding white. Adding more white. Can you hear that like that? And then rinse the brush and with pure white, I will do a little sparkle effect here, like that. So far, We've done the base coat, the first dry brush, we've done some orange, we've done some blue effects, we've done a second dry brush and I've painted in the gemstone. Now I've actually got two bits to do. The next bit is I'm going to do some weathering with the mid-brown wash that comes in the um, comes with the kit. And once I've done that and that's dry, I'm going to add some tufts and I've got a final super highlight with the matte white and then the scenery is done. So, weathering, I'm using my wash brush and the wash. And here the trick is to add some, some weathering around the base a bit. There's no really right or wrong. It's not a wash all over the place. That's not the, the purpose of it. It's the purpose here is to Add extra shading where, where it might look, yeah, where, where it needs to in, in the crevices. You can see in here, I'm gonna do. And if you get a line like that, it doesn't look too good. You simply rinse the brush, and while the paint is still wet, you feather the edge. And now you get sort of a blended tone. Again, scenery is not precision. Scenery is not painting miniatures. This is, uh, you look at scenery from a distance of a foot or a couple of feet, you don't need to spend, there's, there's no point in spending like, hours and hours and hours and making perfect blends. So I'll work my way through all the twists, but what, what I'll also do is I'll, I'll add weathering streaks wherever there's holes. So we, I don't know if you can see it on the camera here. Here we've got some weathering, and then 
pretending like the, that there's some streaks of old grime or whatever that's been running running from that area. This is a bit tricky work and it's a bit difficult for me to do on this angle but I'll go back and and, and, and do that. Weathering wash is dry and now it's time for a super highlight. This is actually uh, an addition to the set. It's one of the colors that I bought from my Dibble Dollars. It is matte white and this will just add very, very sort of super highlight to the raised um, surfaces. And this needs to be very dry. I'm just sorry, it might not be the best camera angle, but I need to see what I'm doing. So not all over the place, just on, on. It's like an edge highlight. That will make the scenery look good from from a distance. Nothing more than that. Last bit, we have the tufts. Actually, when I say last bit, it's last bit before varnishing and gloss varnish. So, actually not last bit at all. I've got these two tufts. I have the Scorch Tuft in the set and I bought Swamp Tufts extra. Um, even though there is a little bit of glue on on the um, on each tuft, you you're better off sealing it with just a tiny spot of uh, PVA glue. So PVA glue up here. And you only need really a tiny tiny bit. Uh, just spreading it out a bit. And now I'm just gonna pick up a tuft, dip it in the glue and attach it. Yeah, I'll see how many I'll put on. Maybe, I don't know, six or seven tufts per, per scenery piece will probably be appropriate. Right. My test piece, uh, final bit, is once I've done all that, is to give it a matte sealer. Scenery primer again, so it doesn't melt anything. Give it a good shake. And really, just coat your model and varnish. As before, upside down until only air comes out. Cleans the nozzle. So the spray varnish is dry. Now you can see it's it's all matte. And what we really want is the is the elder gemstone to um, to shine a little bit. So I've got here some gloss varnish, one of my twenty dipped dollar purchases, and it's fairly easy. Just give it a good coat. And that will now be gloss, whereas the rest will be matte. And that is really my test piece done. Only four gazillion other pieces to do now. No problem. <laughs> uh, I mean, brilliant idea with the uh, with the Ildar. Stuff. I don't. I mean, that was that was just that was just cool. I mean, and just how look how different it is. I mean, it's it's the color. It's just striking. The spray. Yeah, I think it's to be honest. The, the difference in these two is yes, the shapes and all that, but it's the spray. And the yeah. spray, whether you use one spray or the other spray, it's the same work. But all of a sudden, we have a completely different setup. Yeah. Um, 
And I was just thinking, I mean, if I've drawn this one, I mean, it's like the spray job, doing this by hand normally would, would, would take forever. I mean, yeah. you lose the spray black and then you, you, you move on. But just if that was over here, completely different look as well. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 actually want, that, yeah. I actually want to make competitive now with that, just seeing the techniques you used, they were brilliant. Um, obviously, the Elda bits, is, I don't think I can do that, but maybe it didn't. I think actually the Elda bits is one thing. I think what I really like in the set is that you get the desert colors, but then you get this um, orangey, dry rust-ish type of color that really adds a lovely, super contrast to this. Yeah. Um, it looked like the, the scenery is wounded. Yeah. That, that, I love that effect. That is really cool. Uh, and the blue contrast just strikes it down. I mean, it's, uh, it's really good. For a crusade thing, it's really good, I must admit. Obviously not as, you know, but what? What I hear you saying is that you really like my style, my stuff, and probably, and when, if, if, if it was up to you, that would probably be the winner. We're on camera, I'm polite here. So, so basically, obviously, you know, if you go close, I mean, yours is really great on a distance. Uh, you can, you cannot get close enough to mine. I mean, no, that's, that is true. The beating with that rock just did it for me. I mean, that, that was, that was cool. But uh, all in all, I can say uh, another challenge. Another challenge. Well done. Two days. Good fun. Good, Good fun. fun. Yeah. And... The cool thing is, uh, there was the first time we tried to make real scenery with this, and uh, it's so easy. I mean, obviously, a bit more talented on the artistic thing, but even for the simple competitive stuff, you can make it look really cool. Pick any color you want, make any sort of theme you want, and still have it really playable. For the Crusade, that's just the sky's the limit. I mean, you should make an ice table next. That would be, that would be cool. That would be cool. So. I really think between both Bo and Jonas that they showed off how simple and fun it can be to build your own terrain. In 48 hours, Jonas was able to fully assemble and paint a really thematic narrative theme table, his Elder Craft Worlds themed tabletop. It looks fantastic. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. We can't wait to see what you build next with your own terrain kits from the Game Master range by the Army Banner.